Are you ready to give those speakers the power that they deserve? Well, today we're gonna to show you how to do that. Hey everybody, Mike here at Trail7. We're really excited to be here today. Today we're gonna to show you how to get the power to those speakers with our Trail7 plug and play amp kit. We have speakers out there, we have subs out there, we have head units out there. Well, today we're gonna to put all that together and deliver the power that all of that system is waiting for. So we at Trail7 have put together plug and play bundles for your Jeep, whether it's a factory amplified system or a non-factory amplified system, whether it has a factory head unit like you have here or an aftermarket head unit, we have the bundle that's set up for you with the options in the drop down menu. So today we're gonna to show you how to install the amplifier in an amplified Jeep that has an aftermarket head unit. And I'll show you on the table here the other options and how to wire it up. So when you receive your bundle, you'll know how to connect that. Now I do wanna say that this installation, we're installing a five channel amp. We have four channel amp bundles. We have five channel amp bundles. And doesn't matter which type of amp you're installing, for the most part, the installation will be the same. We can use this in any one of the amplifier bundles that you'll see advertised here at Trail7. So we're gonna show you how to install this in the Jeep today in our Gladiator. Let's go through a couple of the tools on the bench that you're gonna need, and then I'll go over some of the parts that you're gonna need for our install, and then I'll show you some of the parts that you're gonna get in your bundle if you have a factory head unit and how to attach those units as well. So let's go over the tools that you're gonna need. Trim panel remover, a screwdriver, this is just a Phillips head bit for the drill. You'll need a 10 millimeter, a set of wire strippers for just one or two, actually for two wires, the rest is gonna come already prepared for you. A pair of snips, again, just for those two wires because everything will come plug and play ready for you. All right, so let's get into a couple of the parts and pieces that you're gonna receive. Like I said, the Jeep that we have today is a factory amplified Jeep, so it has the factory Alpine system and it has an aftermarket head unit. So we're gonna show you how to install that type of setup here shortly using this wire harness, which I'll explain to you and using everything that comes here. But let's talk through if you have a factory head unit and you have a non-amplified system. So if you don't have the factory subwoofer in your Jeep and the non-amplified system, then you're gonna use what we're gonna provide to you in the drop down menu, which would be the PAC CH41 module, the harness that comes in the PAC module, and of course your factory head unit. We're gonna provide a plug and play wire harness here that's gonna have a connector on one side that will connect into the pack harness, which I'll show you. It'll have a blue lead on here for your amp on. Again, I'll show you. And it's gonna have fork connectors which are gonna to attach to the amplifier, which we'll show you as we're doing it on the Jeep here. This is gonna come for you already in prepped. So again, if you have the factory head unit, I have a factory head unit for demonstration here. After you remove your dash piece and after you unscrew your head unit, I'll walk you through how to install the pack module onto the factory head unit. So your, your factory head unit is gonna have a connector on it that looks similar to this, which you're gonna remove from your head unit. Then gonna attach the pack T harness you're gonna connect this to the back of the head unit. And you're gonna snap it into place just like that. This side here is gonna to connect to the pack module, just like so. And then your factory harness from the Jeep is gonna connect back into this piece here. The wire bundle that we send you, we will have a pre-terminated end on it. And this is gonna connect into the black connector on the pack module, just like so. I'll show you all the routing once we get into the Jeep. I just wanna show you here on the bench how this is gonna install into your application of the factory head unit, the non-amplified system. What this wire is gonna do, it's gonna, for one, connect the amp to your head unit, but it's gonna allow you to utilize the factory speaker wire so you don't need to run new speaker wires from your amp out to your speakers. You're gonna simply run this one cable from the amp to the head unit, and then your power and your ground from your amp to the battery. And we're gonna again show you how to do that. So in addition to this one connector, you're gonna attach the black to the black connector. You're also going to attach the blue amp on wire to 
the blue amp-on wire that's on the other end of the packed module harness. And this will come with these two bullet connectors, the male and female connectors for you. So now if you can visualize the head unit in this fashion, and where this packed module would hang, this would go behind the glove box. And I can show you how you'd get into that and hang this behind there. You'll run the wire behind the glove box, drop this down, and this will mount right behind the glove box. And the RCAs that you run will connect to the RCA module, then it'll run out to the amp. And again, we'll show you all the routing once we get into the Jeep. So that's it for a factory head unit with a non-amplified system. Now let's say you had a aftermarket head unit and a non-amplified system. You know, since each aftermarket head unit varies slightly with the connectors, we wouldn't be able to give you a wire harness that has the appropriate connectors on for your aftermarket head unit since they all vary. So what we're gonna do is the amp connection side will still be the same with the fork connectors to attach to the amp. The RCAs will be present, everything else will be plug and play for you. But this is gonna have to run to the back of your head unit and you're gonna simply match up colors to colors on the back of your head unit following the same type of pattern. So imagine your aftermarket head unit has this harness coming out of it. You're gonna grab the set of speaker wires that are coming away from your head unit going into the Jeep, and you're gonna match the colors to colors, and you're gonna splice those onto it. Wish that we could set this up for you with your aftermarket head unit. Unfortunately, with Alpine or Sony or Stinger, or there's so many different variations of aftermarket head units, we just don't know what you have. So it wouldn't be possible for us to pre-terminate that for you. I would like to mention that if you do purchase the head unit, the aftermarket head unit simultaneously with the bundle from Trail 7, that we can pre-wire this harness for you to connect to that head unit, obviously, since we know which head unit it's gonna be, whether it's an Alpine or a Stinger or a Sony, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They will know which connections to attach to it, so that will come pre-terminated for you, so it'll be a simple plug and play. So now that we've covered the factory head unit and an aftermarket head unit in a non-amplified Jeep, a non-factory amplified Jeep, now let's cover a factory amplified Jeep. So if your Jeep is equipped with the factory subwoofer from the back, whether it's a Gladiator be behind the bench or whether it's a JL Wrangler, um, it'll be in the rear of the cargo area on the right-hand side there. So let's cover that type of installation where we're gonna bypass that factory amp with the plug and play harness that's gonna utilize the factory speaker wires. The aftermarket head unit with the factory amplified system. We're gonna do that, we'll show you that system. If you have a factory amplified system and a factory head unit, then the pack module install will still be the same. The only difference is you're gonna follow the type of install to bypass the amplifier that we're gonna show you in the Jeep. So factory amplified, you're gonna install the pack module with the factory head unit aftermarket head unit, we're gonna show you how to install that. Both scenarios, we'll use this harness here, which is gonna to attach to the amp, and this is going to attach to where the factory amplifier is, which is underneath the steering wheel, and we're gonna show you how to bypass the factory amplifier to util utilize the speaker wire. All right, so those are the different options available. Let's go ahead and show you how to prep the wire harness. We can do that at the table here, and then you'll have to do this once you get into the Jeep, but let's go ahead and show you what you're gonna to have to do on your side. We've prepped both sides with the ferrules, so you won't need to. You'll just need to connect it to the fuse block. You'll see in our example here, this is what we're gonna use in the Jeep. We do have this fuse block bracket available. It's just not applicable for 392s or the 4XEs, so we can't include it, but we will have it as an option that you can purchase that. Um, I definitely recommend it. It keeps the fuse nice and neat and it mounts to the night nicely on the side. We'll show you how we're doing that. So this is how one that we're gonna use. We're gonna show you how yours is gonna come. So here's the fuse block. Go ahead and open it up. Use the Allen key that's provided. You're gonna unscrew a little screw in here. Now inside of here is a little piece of plastic, a little piece of rubber. Just knock that out. Now attach to the plastic cover, these little rubber grommets. Grab a rubber grommet, slide it over the end. And with this unscrewed, you're gonna slide the ferrule in, put the grommet on the edge, and just go ahead and tighten this down. And there you go. You're gonna do that with both sides. However, you're not gonna do this until you pull the power wire through the Jeep firewall. So don't connect this until you get it through. 
we can mount the fuse, we can do all that. Just don't connect this power wire, the main power wire, until you pull it through the Jeep. You can go ahead and prep this side of it. You can actually go ahead and attach this to the battery as well, which again, we're gonna show you those steps. And then simply just take the cover and snap the cover back on. And there you go. All right, now that we've done the power setup, just from the table, again, we'll show you in the Jeep. Let's go ahead and show you a little bit of the amp setup so you understand where the fort connectors are gonna to attach to the amp for the speaker connections. This amp is set up with amp one and amp two. Amp one is referring to the front speakers and amp two on the bottom here is referring to the rear speakers. The way that the harness is prepped with the fort connectors, the white connectors are the front left, the gray connectors are the front right, the green connectors are the rear left, and the purple connectors are the rear right. You notice since this is a five channel amp, it has two on the side here for the fifth channel, which is the subwoofer. On this side, we've attached the fork connectors for you. So using the speaker wire here, it's yellow and black. The yellow is the positive and the black is the negative. On the ports over here on the far right side, the top it says sub plus and the bottom says sub negative. When you're connecting the fort connectors into here, you're gonna to wanna to touch the bottom row first and then do the top or else it'll be hard to access the bottom. So bottom first and then do the top. And again, we'll show that to you. Something else I do wanna actually point out on the nine wire here, there's eight wires that have the fort connectors on them. There's this one wire here that has a blue ferrule on it. This is the amp on wire. And this wire is gonna connect into the middle over here, which is labeled REM. You're gonna use the Allen key for this here. This unscrews, you're gonna slide the ferrule in and tighten it down. The same would apply for your power and for your ground on the amplifier. So your ground wire will come prepared with the ferrule. You're gonna unscrew using the Allen key, the little bolt on here. You're going to slide the ground into the ground. And you're going to tighten that down. Same applies for the power, etc. We'll have a diagram, of course, in the installation manual, so you don't have to remember all of that. We will have it displayed for you with clear color diagram to show you which cable plugs into where, along with pictures, so it'll walk you right through it. Don't worry about it. We'll get you through the install. So one more portion we need to talk about connecting to the amp are the RCAs. So let's go ahead and flip the amp around to their side. These are, these are the suggested levels to set the amp at. So let's talk about the RCA harness that we'll provide. We'll provide a six channel RCA, regardless if you pick up a four channel amp or a five channel amp. So if you pick up a, a four channel amp, you're just not gonna use the sub portion of this. The RCA harness is labeled F, R, and S. That's front, rear, and sub. Picking up the two RCAs for the front, the R for red, and the black is the white. You're gonna go over to the amp. So the amp one is gonna be your front, matching up with the front. And you're gonna plug the red with the red and the white with the black. And follow that all along. So the rear, going to follow that same pattern. Something to note with this RCA here, this is a directional RCA. So what that means is this has to be plugged in in one single direction. It's not a bi-directional signal doesn't go both ways. So there's a label on here that says signal direction. It's written on the cable and it points this way, meaning that this end here is what needs to plug into the amplifier. Okay. So it's written on the cable here in very small letters, directional, and it points signal, and it's pointing this way, so this goes to the amplifier. Again, we'll have this all written out in instructions, so you don't need to, to try to remember that now. Uh, we'll have it displayed, so it'll be easier to follow along looking at the pictures that we display as well. Everything will be provided. You go ahead and pick yourself up, probably about 10 to 15 zip ties. You'll need these to strap in the battery cables and the cables underneath the dash, etc. So grab yourself a, a pile of zip ties.
All right. I think we have everything here on the table discussed. I think we're prepped. Uh, let's go ahead and for the fun part now, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. All right, so we're in the Gladiator now. We're going to go ahead and get this five channel amp installed. Uh, first thing I want to do is show, so this Gladiator has an Alpine head unit in. Uh, the installation is a little bit different here because the screen is located here. However, the head unit itself is located underneath the steering wheel column. But I do want to show you in case you have a factory head unit of how to install the pack module and where that's going to land and all that. So again, I, I, want to, I want to make this so that way everybody across the board can understand how to install this into their vehicle depending on the application they have. Factory amplified, non-factory amplified, factory head unit or an aftermarket head unit. So first of all, what we need to do is remove this bottom trim panel piece here. Actually with the Alpine head unit, this trim piece comes off first. You can set this aside. Then we need to remove this bottom trim piece panel here is your panel removal tool. And go into the side here. Just pry that up a little bit. Pull on this side. Sounds gnarly, no damage. It's all right. Pull this out. You can remove this just by pulling these little tabs up here. All right, with that bottom piece removed, now you're ready to take the head unit out. And these screws are all, for all for the entire Jeep, it's either a Phillips head screw or a seven millimeter. I'm gonna use the Phillips head screw just because this screen is pretty close up here and I wanna use a very narrow uh, bit here just so I don't scratch the screen. Now, if you have a, if you have a factory head unit, the removal is gonna be basically the same the only difference is on the factory head unit, you have a, a rubber bezel piece around there. You'll have two screws that remove that bezel piece. You'll pull the bezel piece off, and then you'll still have four screws to mount in your factory head unit. So when you pull out your factory head unit, you'll have obviously some different components back there, again, because this has the aftermarket Alpine head unit in it. I just really wanted to show this to you so you can get an idea of how to route for the pack module. So in addition to that, let's go ahead and lower the glove box and let's go ahead and remove the glove box. There's a tab up top, you can feel it, it's a plastic tab, you'll push that tab in, the glove box will lower down. Some glove boxes have a little arm on the side, some don't. This one's already been disconnected. So go ahead and pull your glove box out and you can just set it out of the way. All right, now to show you the path of the pack module harness behind the head unit, You'll see here, you see that little bit of light, that's what's coming through the glove box. So that area there, that's where we're gonna feed the wire harness through. And that's really just gonna push down inside there. So you're just gonna push this wire down inside and that will just drop right into the glove box. Let's just go ahead and attach the connector to the pack module. Now remember you are going to connect the RCAs to the ports here, following the same path of this wire from the back of the head unit. And then you're also gonna plug in the blue amp on wire from the speaker harness wire to this connector right here. And you can just zip tie this, mount this, whichever is really gonna work out for you up here somewhere. All right, so now that we have the pack module attached and connected in the glove box, again, this is if you have a factory head unit and this is gonna be as if your Jeep is non-factory amplified, how the harness will come to you. This nine wire, this will route up through the glove box behind here, but I wanted to show you how this is gonna attach to the T-harness like we talked about on the bench there. We're simply gonna attach the connector that we provide to the black connector that's on the pack harness, like so. Then this is gonna to attach to the back of your head unit, and this is gonna to attach to the main harness coming out of the Jeep. This blue wire is gonna feed back down to that same channel, and that's gonna to attach to the blue wire that's attached right next to the pack module that has the female bullet connector to match up with this here. So that's the pack install. Let's go ahead and get 
on with the install for this specific Jeep, which is factory amplified with a aftermarket head unit, Alpine being the aftermarket head unit. You're gonna go ahead and install the head unit back in. If you have an aftermarket head unit that you're gonna to connect to the speaker wire attached to, then like I said, if you purchase it from us, then we'll be able to pre-terminate that for you to where you can just attach it. Um, if you don't, then you will need to, as we demonstrated on the bench there, to splice in the speaker wires matching color to color. So either way, the head unit's gonna go back together and we can do that now. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and prepare the driver's side seat for the amp install. Everything that we've pre-wired, we've made cut the length for the amp to mount underneath the driver's side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the seat completely for the install, it's just easier for demonstration. You don't need to remove it, you do still need to unscrew all four of the bolts and just tilt it back, which I'll show you. Um, so just to walk through what we're gonna do over here is prepare the seat for the install, prepare the carpet, which is pulling the carpet back, I'm gonna remove this kick panel trim piece underneath here, which uh, the Alpine head unit is located there. And you'll also need that for the cable routing for access as well. To remove the bolts from the seat, it's a 10 mil. So let's go ahead and remove the bolts. Here's the first bolt up in the front outside part. Second bolt is over here inside the rail. The third bolt, if you slide the seat forward, that's how you're gonna be able to access that. The third bolt and the fourth bolt is against the middle part here right there. All right, so let's go ahead and slide the seat back all the way. Let's lift, pull the seat front forward. I'm gonna lift the back of the, tail, uh, the bench up so that way there's more room for this to sit back to. All I did was lift the bench up. Now we can tilt the seat all the way back. We have plenty of room to work underneath here. And this is where the amp is gonna sit. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the seat so we have full visibility of the work area so you can see exactly what I'm doing to install this amp. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the, uh, the heat warmer to, from the seat to remove the seat. Again, totally your choice if you wanna do this or not. All right, so there's two connectors here. There's this big black one here and the mustard colored one. Go ahead and push this tab inside here. You'll hear it click and just pull it right out. And then for this guy, pull this red piece back. And you can just slide this little tab out just by pushing down. You have to push this little tab down as you pull it out and then pull that out. Swing the wire around. Now I go ahead and take the seat out. Seats out, let's go ahead and pull this panel down. This panel just pops right down. Make sure that all of the little white clips stayed in. If they didn't, go surfing for them. You can just put that in the back there. And we're gonna wanna pull all this carpeting up because our amp is gonna mount right here. But we do need access to this path here. Let's go ahead and pull this up. Let's go ahead and pull it out of here. Pull it out of its socket there. You can remove the mud guard. Pull this down. Now what we want to do, this is lifted, this is prepped up. Now what we want to do is we want to remove the trim panels here. So this trim panel will come out. These trim panels will come out. The trim panel back here and in the rear also, because remember we are gonna go ahead and set and install an eight inch sub in the back seat there. So let's go ahead and get these trim panels removed. All right, now that the carpet is pulled up, I've gone ahead and I've sat the amp where it's gonna sit. So we're gonna face the speaker wire and the power towards the transmission center here, which means the RCAs are gonna face towards the door, towards the out. Just go ahead and set that there. That's where it's gonna set. And in order to mount it, I have a little piece of Velcro what you're gonna do is just put this on the bottom of it. 
but really just make it so where it's the sticky side grabbing the carpet versus the hook and loop grabbing the carpet because it doesn't really grab this carpeting really well more or less just to stop it from sliding around. So it's the stickiness that's gonna stop it from sliding around. All right, but we're not gonna mount it down. We're not gonna secure it until we run all the wiring. So what we're gonna do now is the carpet's lifted up. We're gonna remove the trim on the, on the side here. There is a plate on the inside here that we wanna remove so we can run the RCAs along there. This plate here, and it's with two 10 millimeter bolts. Once we have the trim removed, I'm gonna run the the nine wire from the amp along this route and along the trim. This is gonna to connect to the factory amp, which is gonna bypass the factory amp with our plug and play harness. The RCAs are gonna to connect to the amp over here. They're gonna run along the carpet. They're gonna run along the casing inside here. And it's gonna tuck up behind the console here. And we're gonna attach the RCAs to the head unit. Remember, this is the Alpine head unit. So the RCAs are located down here, which is actually really convenient for this install. We're gonna attach the ground wire. There's a ground lug right here. So we're gonna attach this right to the amp. We're gonna unscrew this with the 10 millimeter and we're gonna secure the ground wire. We're also gonna go ahead and run the speaker wire for the sub, which is gonna come out from this side as well. It's gonna run around the side. We're gonna pull this trim out and this is gonna run back to the sub that's gonna sit in the back. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So let's go ahead and remove the trim paste panels first. And they just pop right out like so. This one is screwed in here. There's a 10 mil screw, a 10 mil bolt up here. So we're gonna remove. Okay, that's out. Now we can go ahead and pull this trim paste panel out completely. Okay, what we also wanna do is Remove these trim piece panels. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this all off here. Just pop this back here. Pop this trim off here. And that's about enough of it for now. We just wanna get this loose. We'll take the rest of this off when we go into the back there because we will need to take the storage bin compartment out to mount the sub. So when I get back there, I'll take the rest of it. I just wanna get this out of the way so I can route the wiring. So now that, that's lifted and up out of the way. Let's go ahead and get our nine wire connected to our amp. And again, using the color codes that we talked about on the bench there, I'm gonna attach the nine wires using the fork connectors to the amplifier. So the solid green is the positive, and the green with the black line, it's pretty faint. The green with the black line is the negative. So this is the left rear. So it's left rear is over here. So positive is on the left. Just screw that in. Negative is on the right. Purple with the black line is negative and purple solid is the positive. So it's purple solid is next, and purple negative. Next we're gonna to go to the top row, which are the front speakers. Positive is white with the solid, and negative is white with the black stripe. So the left is gonna be your white, po your white solid. Next one is gonna be your left negative which is your black, your white with the black stripe. Next, it's the front right, which is your front right positive, which is gray, solid line, solid gray. And the right negative is gray with the black line, again, very faint line. While we're here, we might as well go ahead and hook up the ground, the REM. So we're gonna use the Allen key. Slide the ferrule in and tighten down on the ferrule. Next, we're going to attach the ground. Loosen the ground screw. Grab our ground wire that we have prepared for you. Slide the ferrule into the slot. And tighten it down. Next, we're going to go ahead and slide the power wire in. It already has the ferrule attached to it. This ferrule has been squished because we've used it.
All right, the connections on this side of the amp are complete. So we can go ahead and set the amp where it's going to go on this side. All right, so now this is where we want the amp to sit. I can go ahead and I can attach the ground. It's going to attach to this ground lug right here. Go ahead and, and use a 10 mil to remove this bolt. Go ahead and attach the ground wire. There's a little cubby you can tuck the slack wire up inside of. And tighten it down. All right, both the power and the nine wire are going to route the same way. So they're going to route underneath the carpeting here. Underneath the, um, the air vent here. What I want to do is I want to remove this channel piece because I want to mount the, uh, I want to route the wires underneath this channel piece here. So I'm going to remove this plastic channel. There's one, two, three. 10 millimeter bolts to get this panel off of here. So let's go ahead and take that off. How I want to route is underneath this wire here. Same thing underneath here. And I want to round it, route it forward. Just like so. You can tuck this up here because you're going to need to route this through the fire stop that's here. And that nine wire is going to attach to, again, the factory amp that's underneath there. All right, so let's go ahead and get the subwire installed. You can absolutely install the subwire prior to sending it down here. I didn't just because I wanted to see, check the routing on that once again. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and screw them into the ports with the sub down here. The top port is the positive. The bottom is the negative. So you want to do the bottom first. And the bottom being the negative means that's the black. The top being the positive means that's the yellow. So let's go ahead and get the bottom one down. And unscrew it. Slide that in. Slide that in. There you go. Your sub wire is down. Let's go ahead and route this and we'll just leave it in the back there and we'll manage it once we get back there. All right, so this this wire is going to follow the same routing underneath the, underneath the air vent. I'm going to tuck underneath where the power and the nine wire are routed. And with that, we can go ahead and, and screw this piece back down, 10 millimeter bolts. There's one, there's two, there's the third. Like I said, use a couple of zip ties. I'll just zip tie this together just to make it pretty. All right, now that that is routed, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the RCAs and plug the RCAs in and have those route the other direction. Now, I have this already zip tied together because this is going to slide behind the dash in the bottom. Uh, definitely recommend stashing it down there and we'll get to that. So let's go ahead and plug it in. So as I said earlier, they're labeled FRS, front, rear, and sub. So let's go ahead and grab our front Red is red and black is white. Now let's move on to the next, our rear. Red is red, black is white. And move on to the sub. Red is red, black is white. So we're going to go ahead and route the RCAs. They're going to go underneath the air vent to the center. They're going to run along the center here. And then the, the slack wire is going to be managed behind the console here.
Something that we do need to do in order to get the RCAs in their spot, what I recommend is storing all of the slack cable back behind here. So I'm gonna remove this piece right here. That way I can access this little cavity back here. So I'm gonna stock all of the access RCA wiring back behind there. So let's go ahead and get that out. These are just two 10 millimeter bolts that come off of there. What I wanna do is I wanna be able to access this so I can store all of the access RCAs up inside here. And that gives me enough RCA slack because again, this being an Alpine head unit, the RCAs are located right here. In case you haven't seen an Alpine head unit, the body, the head unit itself, mounts right up underneath here. So all the connections are behind it. If you're running an aftermarket head unit besides an Alpine, and this is up in the center console, then you're gonna to need to attach to your RCAs just like I'm gonna do here. So same thing on here, where it's front rear sub. This is the front. And this is the front on the RCA listed. Black to white. Red to red. To the rear, I go black to white. This is gonna be labeled rear. This probably will look different than your RCAs, but uh, the concept is the same. They're gonna be labeled front, rear, and sub. So we're gonna go black is to white, red is to red. And the last pair here, it's gonna go black to white and red to red. We can just tuck this wiring up inside here along the way and we can go ahead and mount that bracket back. To where it's out of the way. All right, now that we have the speaker wire ran, the RCAs ran, the power wire ran, um, the nine wire ran, we are good to go to button this up, This the carpeting at least. We're pretty much done for all intents and purposes running cabling in this area. A little bit of, of wire management to do, but we can at least put the carpeting back and tuck it away. Do what you did to take it out backwards. Go ahead and leave the RCAs exposed because we have a little bit of, of maintenance to do on this side before we fasten that completely. Tuck our carp carpeting away. I'll zip tie that at the end. A good thing to do is not really button everything up too much until you do a final check. So I'll just kind of seat it down here loosely and then I can come back around and I can do, you know, all the final really firm fittings, but you know, to get that down. So now what we wanted to do is let's move on to the power install, right? So the power wires ran to this point. Now we need to get it through, get the end through the firewall and ran over to the battery. So let's go ahead and show you that routing now. I'm gonna go up to this hole right here. All right, I've already drilled through this grommet, so we're just gonna go ahead and feed the wire through. You can just push it all the way through and grab it near side. So go ahead and just pull the remaining wire out through there, and there you go. The wire's through the engine compartment. All right, now we've got the power wire pulled into the engine compartment. We're gonna go ahead and route this up along the front here and install the, uh, the fuse block. I've already installed um, some cable management zip tie stickies here along the, along the route. So there's one here, there's one there, and that's where I'm just gonna zip tie the wire to. Just gonna run this underneath here. I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this along the way. Yeah. 
let's cut these off. Next, we're going to move to the other side to where we can mount the fuse block and attach the power wire to the battery terminal. All right, now we're over on the battery side, so let's go ahead and finish running the wire. I'm going to zip tie it to these last two spots here. We, like I said earlier, we mounted our fuse block to this fuse bracket. We can supply this bracket. We'll have this as an option. It's not going to come with the kit just because it doesn't fit with some applications. It does not fit with the 392 and it does not fit with the 4XE. This being a gladiator, it works here. Um, and this does mount right in this spot here. So a couple things to prep for the, with the fuse before installing it. We want to go ahead and swing this fuse out of line so that way we can go ahead and connect it to the battery. And once we're done with the final install, done connecting everything inside to the amp, to the, the wire harness, etc., then we'll come back around and swing the fuse back around to connect it and fasten it down. In order to do so, loosen both sides a little bit. And when you loosen this side, you'll notice it just swings. So it swings right around. Now we can leave it loose. So now I want to go ahead and get this mounted. Like I said, this mounts right here. This uses a 10 millimeter. And then it comes with another 10 millimeter that mounts right here. Now that's installed. So now we can run the power wire underneath here. And there's just enough slack to get that in to the block. Use the provided Allen key. Slide this in and tighten it down. And there you go. We can go ahead and attach this to the battery terminal. 10 millimeter. Let's loosen that bolt there. Let's go ahead and attach the power wire to the positive terminal now. And connect it right there. And it's 10 mil, tighten it down. All right, so now that the battery terminal, the fuse block is attached, remember after we connect everything at the amp, we're gonna to wanna to come back here and just swing the fuse around and tighten that down and put the cover back on. I can rest the cover on it just so nothing hits for now. Let's go ahead and move in on, back on the inside. Let's, let's finish up with the um, amp bypass harness wire and time to mount this up. So a couple more things to do here. We're almost done, so let's keep going. So we, want, we do wanna route this cable behind this bar here. So that way when you put the trim piece back, it sits flush and doesn't bow out on you. So before we connect it, just go ahead and push these up around this bar. And pull down. So we're gonna disconnect the factory amplifier which is located underneath the steering wheel column. Here's this middle gray connector. We're going to disconnect, just like so. And the other gray connector to let to the side of it, that's gonna come out also. Both of these connectors are gonna to connect to our amp bypass harness, like so. So this is gonna route. Back behind here.
The amp bypass harness is attached, and as you can, as you saw from how easy that was to install, that completely utilized our factory speaker wire, so we don't need to run new speaker wire. So it's literally that one harness from the amp to those connectors, the amp on wire, and that's it. So let's go ahead and button the wires up down here. It's a matter of just zip tying a couple of wires. So let's go ahead and take care of that. If you had a four channel amp, you would be done because the speakers are all connected, everything is done. Now that we have a five channel amp, we're gonna go ahead and carry on with the sub install. So we already attached the sub wire, the speaker wire to the amp. We're gonna go ahead and route this to the back of the Gladiator and we're gonna install the sub back there. I'm gonna, I am gonna have to take that tray out. So this is gonna route through the channel through here. And all I'm gonna do is, is feed this wire underneath this trim and toss it in the back area. And then when we reattach all this, we'll just make sure that it is tucked underneath it. All right, now we're gonna move to the back because I need to take that tray out and prep the area to set the, the sub into. All right, in order to mount this down firing sub in the back of the Gladiator, we do of course need to remove the storage bin here. This is super easy. There's four bolts, 10 millimeter bolts, of course. So let's go ahead and get these removed and get the tray out. All right, now the sub is gonna just rest back here. And really the placement of it is your preference, right? Um, whether you want it right in the middle, it's kind of a good spot for it. It has clearance underneath to where the subs don't hit the carpet. Um, that seems to be a, a pretty good spot. It's centered. I'm happy with that. All right, so with the seats down, and on this side, and there's still plenty of space. This barely sticks out, right? So, if you didn't want it all the way over on that side, in case you wanted to come up with, you know, some sort of half bench or half storage bin, you can of course slide this over and you can have it sit here as well. And again, you, know, you have plenty of space underneath here to where the, the subs aren't hitting anything underneath. There's a good spot for it to sit just there like that. And of course that's plenty of space as well. I still like it right there in the middle. So for this install, I'm gonna go right there. All right, so this is where the sub is gonna sit. Let's go ahead and get this speaker wire routed to it. I'm gonna push the sub out of the way because what I wanna do is I wanna bring the speaker wire up through this hole here so I can just route it back behind it and then connect it to it. So in order to do that, I do want to finish taking this piece off, but it just pops out underneath. I can just swing that around so that's out of the way. And I want to route the wiring underneath here. Just really, it's the, the cleanest route, whatever route really works for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push that on through there. Make sure not to put the wire in between these little clips right here because these clips are needed to attach the trim piece back into it. And go ahead and route it through that little hole there. And now we can put the trim piece back together. That is how it should be. Now let's go ahead and prep the speaker wire for the connection. So the sub is gonna sit just about there. So I'm just gonna 
really just going to run this wire underneath here, give it enough uh, slack there to connect into there. So let's go ahead and prep it right about here. Let's pull it back. Just strip back uh, like a half inch or so. So throughout this entire install, this is the only wire on your side that you're going to have to worry about cutting. I guess the only reason we're not going to do it on our side, just in case you want to mount this up somewhere else. We have seen and heard of people being really creative and mounting the down firing subs behind the bench here um, with some creative relocating of the brackets. We have a customer that did mount a 12 inch down firing sub behind there. So in case you want to do that, then we leave enough speaker wire to do so. And the way that these connect, again, black is negative and yellow is positive. And on here, black is negative and red is positive. So you're gonna go black to black and yellow to red. And these just push right in and connect. And it just pushes right in and connects. Now, as far as mounting this guy, this just mounts just like that. And if you wanted to cut shorter wire, you, know, you can cut shorter wire. If you wanted to secure this in any way, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck it back underneath the carpeting here. I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay. All right, so everything is done now. The sub is in, the five channel amp is in, everything is wired and powered. But before we do a final button up, before I mount the seat and do any final wire dressing or, you know, zip tying or anything like that, what I want to do is I do want to just do a quick little power test to it to make sure that Full sound is coming out of the speakers, full sound is coming out of the sub, just to make sure that we do have connectivity and there aren't any issues in the wiring. So let's do that real quick and then I will button everything up and we're gonna really show you what this thing can do. Now, prior to testing power, of course we need to finish the fuse connection here. So let's go ahead and swing this fuse over. Just like so, fuse is in. Let's go ahead and just tighten it down. And tighten this side down. Now we're just going to go ahead and put the kicker cover plate back on. And there we go. Power is done. We should be able to go ahead and test our power now. So I have the trim panel just attached here. Let's go ahead and put it in accessory mode. And all right, good news. The power button lit up, turned red, turned green. FM. Let's just get a connection real quick. Okay, we do have sound, so that's good. Let's go ahead and turn it off. So before I put the seat back into place here, um, I am gonna attach a piece of Velcro. And as I said earlier, Velcro doesn't really stick so great to this Jeep carpeting. So I'm just gonna attach it to where it's more of the sticky tape is gonna just hold it in place a little bit. Once the seat's down, it's not going anywhere, but just for precaution. Let's go ahead and put this on. Just a little extra measure. There you go. That guy's not going anywhere. Let's go ahead and get our trim piece panel put back in here. The last trim piece panel. 
And we're literally just doing everything backwards that we did before, right? We took things off, we're just putting it back on. There's the one bolt that has to go on here with the 10 mil. You saw me take it off, just putting it back on. We're gonna go ahead and get the seat, put the seat back in here now. All right, everybody, we're finished with the install. Now, of course, the best part is to listen to it. Let's see what this thing does. Yeah, I mean, we, we got to 16 max on that, and I mean, that is just blaring. So, you know, the proper power sent to this speaker upgrade, um, I mean, that sounded phenomenal. All right, so just to recap, Trail 7's plug-and-play bundles, they're meant for your factory amplified or factory non-amplified. They're, they're meant for your aftermarket head unit, your factory head unit, it doesn't matter what application you have, Trail 7 has a plug and play bundle for you that's just as easy as what you saw here. As you saw, there was no cutting, splicing, anything. We cut one wire and that was to attach the sub and that was it. Everything else is just as you see it, that's how you'll receive it. So if you're interested in picking up a plug and play amp bundle from Trail 7, visit us at www.trail7.com and until next time, we'll see you out there.